so I'm a bit of a curiosity. Uh, as you can see, I can't. It's, uh, it's not all bad. Um, now the, the old ladies on the bus get up and give me a seat. I used to refuse, but now I get pretty fucked off if they don't. I'm into observational humour. Did anyone see that bomb at St. Marks and Spencer's earlier? I fucking didn't. Now, what, what I want to talk to you about tonight is a, a nightmare train trip I took down to London from Edinburgh a few weeks ago. It didn't start badly. I, I kicked an old lady off her seat, sat down, put my iPod on and relaxed for about five seconds until another old lady put me in the arm and said I was in the quiet carriage. Magic. Five hours of total silence. Apart from the constant stream of safety announcements you get on the trains these days. The one I like the best is if you see a suspicious package, please inform a member of staff immediately. What the fuck is the tea lady going to do if I rock up with a smoking hold doll? <laughs> but these, these health and safety adverts, they're, they're, they're kind of everywhere now and they get, they've gone so far that they're starting to take the piss. Have you seen the one that you, when they tell you a while ago, what are you going to do if you uh, take a stroke? <laughs> you have to follow the, the letters from the word fast suggesting that uh, the speed is of the essence. So what you do is, F is for face. Your face will, will palsy, it will kind of, what the fuck a palsy face looks like. Um, a is for arms, your, your, your arms will go limp at the side. S is for speech. You know, think when we come in here, which is a very politically incorrect way of saying your speech will become impaired. <laughs> so you're, you're pretty much, hoping T is going to be your salvation. But T is time to call 999. With fucking what? You have just lost the three things you need to use a fucking telephone. So unless you get some, some, uh, unless you get some pretty funky toys, you're pretty fucked. But anyway, I was, on this, uh, I was on this train wondering what to do for the next five hours, but I needn't have worried because I've got one of these. Now, this to you just looks probably like a pretty fucked white stick, but um, it's actually a high strength, full power nutter magnet. I don't know what it is, but nutters see this and feel that they can just kind of come up to me and say whatever the fuck they want. So it kind of it pulsed and, and summoned a nutter in the form of a big Ned from Leith. Now, for those of you who don't know, Leith is in Edinburgh and it's kind of the up and coming edgy bit, aka dangerous shite hole. And uh, this, this guy. This guy is where he introduced himself as, all right, you blind eye. My name's Dink. I got a blowjob off a midget lassie once. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did he, I said, was it any good? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't write home about the kid. <laughs> you write home about blowjobs. <laughs> that would be a lovely letter to get. <laughs> Deal more. I have never brought to you for, but I thought I'd have to tell you about this Barry Gam. Uh, a, a Barry Gam, that is, that's Edinburghian for lovely blowjob. <laughs> Barry Gam, I go with this toy wee lassie kid. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> See it, you stop. Love Dink. <laughs> but, uh, no, but Dink, Dink was a generous, he was a generous big nut, he had a bag of cans on him, we got a nice train session going in the uh, And it was really nice when the, the lady uh, told Dink that he was in a quiet carriage, he said, Oh, shut the fuck up then. <laughs> so that's the way, that's the way, that's the way, that's the way you do it, basically. So, uh, no, um, but then he, 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 he he started talking about um, nutter life and it kind of re reignited my old fear of Edinburgh, the one I had after reading uh, Acid House, because uh, Dick used to be a junkie and he said, aye, I lost a lot of pals to age, Ken. And then he qualified this with, aye, dirty needle aid, not dirty bastard aid, eh? <laughs> as, if, as if it was ever in question, Dick. <laughs> yeah, and, um, so, um, and he started going on, he said, aye, I get up, I get up the smack after hearing my second bell. Um, so obviously the first one wasn't cute enough, but then he, he, said, he said something that was really, was stuck with me all, all my life. He said, um, I still like a wee bit of smack at Christmas, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> it must be lovely around the dinks on uh, Christmas Eve. It's like, when did we leave it for the door? A wee bottle of milk. Uh, a for Santa. A tenner bag. 
Oh, I stop, I stop. <laughs> and he said after that, he says, oh, you should come to me for Christmas, Ken. And I thought he was joking. I thought he was joking. I went, yeah, right. He went, how the fuck, no? <laughs> oh, shit, big mistake. I've angled the nutter. <laughs> so I had to sit there while he abused the shit out of me. He's called me Fifty Shades of Dick in the quiet carriage as well. And um, so I wasn't sure how to get out of this situation. And what I did, I'm not very proud of, I, uh, I faked a stroke. <laughs> I, uh, my, my face palsied, my arms went to my side, my speech went, and the tea this time stood for, tell the nutter fucks off. <laughs> right. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.